Welcome back, guys. We are going to start off the day just finally. I'm Snowy Padre. You can follow me on all of the social media, whatever. It's just Dash Snowy Padre on everything, basically. This is the Company of Gamers LOL Esports 2013 season, and it's the Grinders Online Tournament that we're doing. So it's the first prized event of the year. Pretty damn exciting. We started off with a prize pool of $150, and this jumped right up to $375 every cent of the sign up money going right into the prize pool. So the prize pool is up to 375 plus Riot Tournament prizing. Pretty exciting, sort of decently exciting anyway, for a, for a main tournament going on for COG, except for the uh, grand finalists coming up for the Masters, $1,000 already plugged into that. The first game of the day today will be Exceed versus Full House, which will be starting out now. Best of one, and then in the grand finals, it will be best of three, advantage to the winner of the upper bracket, as it is a, um, a double elimination bracket tournament. I will just link the brackets in the stream chat for you right now, but it is going to be Exceed versus uh, Full House. This is going to be a very exciting game. These two teams are pretty big powerhouses. Um, they are the two right at the very top of that bracket listing, so it's interesting that they're matched up first together, but this is double elimination, so whoever le whoever loses this, so it was randomly generated for the brackets, whoever loses this is not out of the competition, they're just knocked down to the loser's bracket, and they can still fight their way back up. So all fair is fair. This is why I love double elimination. Even if you randomly get those two top teams together at the very start, they can still build up to fight each other. Um, but, uh, yeah, hey, thank you. Thank you, Thin and Bid Man. Apparently, Snowy Padre, lots of expletive letter things. That's great. Anyway, Full House versus XC. Let's get this game underway. Just announcing it over to the to the sexy people in the game, XC versus Full House. So we got, um, over on XC, this is the old, um... Ah, the old high-tech gaming. Exceed actually not at the top of the charts. They joined in... I, I lied about that. Huh. Uh, Exceed is not at the top of the charts for the for the Grinders division. They just joined in last week, actually, in the online points rounds. Very exciting stuff. The, the one game that they did manage to get in and play because they were sleeping. I'm looking at you, Exceed. Um... Was was just devastating. They plowed through their competition, and they are high tech. They've gone up against VGR. Sadly, now a disbanded team. Very very upset about that. I cry in my sleep every night. But um, they they have gone up against them. They fought really hard. They did really really well, and they're coming into COG now. So let's see if they're able to plow through the division here up against Full House, which is uh, one of the top in the in the grinders division currently. Full House, of course, the old I believe. Uh, just, uh, just confirming this to make sure for you, Full House. Oh no, Full House is just a general one. We've got Team Standard Strat in here as well, which is TSMNZ, formerly TSMNZ, and Fixate, which is Earth and Turf, which will be coming up in, uh, later in the day. But right now it is Full House Gaming, sitting at the second top, second to top tier. I think they were overtaken in the, ah, uh, in the brackets listing for COG because they didn't join one of the tournaments accidentally, so... <laughs> We'll let them out. Um, anyway, looking at the bans just over on Exceed Gaming's side, it's Elise Nautilus and Ude getting away Elise. Uh, it's been a very common ban recently because uh, she's turned into one of the, she's turned back into the powerhouse that she was before with all of that ability spamming going straight for mana regen um, and being able to transform constantly, be very, very quick and uh, just get up and run around all over the map. Incredibly versatile, can play quite a lot of lanes. Nautilus, he can be a dangerous jungler. It's interesting that they didn't ban out someone like uh, like Jarvan, who has that much more utility and damage coming in. Uh, just a bit less on that ultimate, but it can lock down team fights. They got down Udo as well. So a lot of junglers getting take it, taken away. Nautilus, Udo, Nu, and Lee Sin. So it's uh, it's a big hit for the junglers. We may just see a Zac here because of of lack of jungler potential. Oh, there's still a lot of great junglers out there. And Blitz and uh, Blitz and Malphite and Shen are still up for grabs, so I'm thinking Shen may be a first pick coming into this game. I am Adam actually picking out the AP Burst Katarina. Thresh is banned out as well, so we're not going to have that crazy, uh, the, those crazy hook plays, those crazy dark passage plays, which you mean so good. I'm a little bit tired today because I did spend yesterday casting IEM, which was so exciting. Shout out to the 50 plus thousand viewers. That were up on that. If there's anyone tuning in, tuning in here, that was so damn exciting to be part of that match, to be casting that match. WE versus uh, Invictus Gaming. God, it just took everything out of me. Sadly, I didn't. I was a subcaster, so I didn't have that much information, and was told about 20 minutes beforehand that I was casting it. So I didn't have that much insight 
It's a bit sad. Vontel picking up the uh, the big, fast, hard hitter on um, sorry ah, on Cassidy. Forgetting all the names. I was using the client Chinese, uh, the Chinese client yesterday, the tournament client, and uh, everything was in Chinese, so I couldn't I couldn't read some of the spells. So I was lost for words a bit of the time. <laughs> uh, not some of the spells. What are we talking about? Um, championship spells. I was derping. All right, it was coming to think of it. Ram is going down as well. I don't actually have the summoner spell covers, but I'll put them up now because I'm just so smart. By the way, hello stream. How are you doing? I know I've left you guys out for a while there, but uh, shout out to everyone shooting in right now. We do have better than Cameron, Glodrick, Granity, Pac-Man Rage, Pizza Man again. What's up, dude? Thinnerbelm, uh, Unstoppable Bro. Hey, uh, Von Tau's coming in as well. Uh, Brace Lot ends it. Uh, Flan813 as well. What's up? And anyone else joining in? I think I missed out lockdown, but whatever. Who cares about lockdown? He's exceed material. But uh, picking up that uh, Ramus is going to be pretty interesting. Ramus ganks can be so scary. Not because like you'd think he wasn't that effective, but if he comes in as a power ball and he gets that off effectively, it can be blocked very easily by champions. Um, oh hey, Morton Short, what's up? Um, his his rolling. I was going to say rolling thunder. <laughs> Volibear Ramus, no. His his wind up his uh, his rolling Ramus ganks are just devastating because they're very fast and hard hitting and you you just can't react to them that quickly especially if, especially if he goes movement speed boots he becomes very very scary but we'll see how it translates into the game we do have a vein coming in so condemned can save them from any kind of ganks there a good uh, a good dodge from uh, from I am a dims over an exceed could easily deny a lot of ganks coming from Remus as well hey Miso what's going on. Thank you, Miso. Cheers. I thought it was a pretty crap, com uh, ah, crap commentary yesterday because I had so little information about the tournament uh, that I just couldn't add that much. And I was also very tired from setting up the UAV event. So I, I think I let everyone down. But people are, people are saying congrats, so I'm happy. <laughs> that happened. Um, but yeah, Snifty's going to be protecting that vein. Can has, uh, she's got a ton of CC protecting that vein going up against that Ramus. Um, and going up against the stand aside from Draven, she can really deny any lockdowns that he can put down as well. Seeing as it's Vontel thinking of going in the mid lane with that Cassidy, we may see uh, Morgana going up for the support role, which could be really, really interesting. Ah, oh, Unstoppable Bro letting himself down. Hey, Tibihihi, how's it going? I was going to send you a text before. I haven't heard from you in a while. This guy, this guy did a little interview with me. Awesome guy, had a great little talk to him. Sadly, haven't been keeping in, in contact like I do with everyone else. I just deny contact to everyone. I isolate myself in my room. Bit of an introvert. Except when it comes to casting. I get right back out there. So, oh, we may see a Sejuani jumping in the jungle. It could be that... Uh, it could be that Rengar is going to pop in the jungle as well. But Rengar does a little bit better in the top lane with Sejuani coming into the mix. It is a, it is a bit of a toss-up, though. We'll see. Hey, no easy. How's it going? Oh, that, uh, that grammar correction from Unstoppable Bro. Oh, that's, that's pretty OP. I like how that happened. Any of you watching this in the future, learn the whole your and your. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just gonna be gonna be crapped on on the internet. Uh, but it is gonna be. Yeah, it looks like it may just be the support Morgana. Time is gonna be going out soon, so we'll see the summoner spells. And Draven sitting there as the ADC with Jax jumping up in the top lane for Full House Gaming. This is going to be an interesting little matchup. There's a there's a decent amount of CC coming out from Full House Gaming that locks down individual targets and controls fights. But to be honest, the CC coming out from Leona alone can can just turn all of that to dust. But there's a lot coming out from Full House Gaming that can deny I am Ademed any of uh, any of his ultimates going out, which can be devastating. But of course, if he does get the refresh in those team fights, you know he'll just jump right back on with them. Um, if he does get the kills, which will give him the refresh on his ultimate, he can just he can just pull that out again, and their stuns will be very much down. Always a sad face to see that stun go to waste. Just gonna have a drink here while I while I refresh my brain, which is not functioning. Anyway, the delay period going down, so now you guys can see exactly what's going on with the summoner spells. I'll update you in just a second. Just gotta drink. Just gotta breathe. Ah. <sighs> Oh man, yesterday just took way too much out of me.
Here we go. Hopefully I can get another one of those Vs to keep me going all day. Jesus. <laughs> Gonna fill up, uh, struck up on caffeine so I can twitch the entire day. Um, TB Hehe asking, how was the UAV get-together? I couldn't make it. Oh, so sad. Um, UAV get-together was actually one of the best get-togethers of the year. By the way, the UAV guys in the chat is the University of Auckland Video Game Club that I run. Um, and it's starting, it's starting to really pick out, really come along. It was a lot of fun. But it was one of the best events of the year that we had. We had 20 pizzas. We had 10, 10 bottles of drink coming in, a couple of juices, a couple of Cokes. Um... And we, we had actually just recently bought two 24, 10, 100, 1,000 uh, Ethernet ports for, for the LAN. We tested them out yesterday, and they were just stunning. And everyone also had, uh, had the IEM qualifiers up at a big screen in the second room that we had, and we had four-player co-op burnout. Uh, three takedown on on the PS2 going on as well. So it was a pretty awesome little event. It was just to get together to get everyone knowing each other. Anyway, back to the cast. The reason you guys are actually here. Sorry, I tend to tend to diverge just a little bit, because that's what I do, I'm, I'm snowy, yeah. I'm disgusting, um, it is going to be Snifty's going in that support role over on Exceed, and hey Halo jumping up in the top lane instead of the jungle with the Rengar, Rick picking up the Sejuani going into the jungle instead, and yes, Lustonite is picking up the Morgana support, so we're going to see a lot of those black shields going out, pulling on the protect against, uh, against Eleona, which is just such a great counter, I love that! Black Shield into uh, into protect from anything coming out from uh, from Eleona, devastating. Plus the control with um with the dark binding, especially against Devane. If she's got her tumble down and she's used it to get a bit aggressive, then a stand aside from uh, from Draven can really put an enemy ADC in a tough position to get caught in a dark binding, and that'll follow up great with uh, with Draven's shred, which is still ridiculous no matter what you say. No matter what. Up at the top lane, interesting uh, matchup with Rengar and Jax. Jax is going to have to play it pretty damn safe, I'm thinking. Rengar's got a lot of burst and a, uh, a lot of abilities are on his side, especially coming up to level 3. Not so much at level 1. So as he levels up, he's going to get more dangerous. Level 3 is going to be his turning point easily, unless Jax can get off a bunch of good stuns. We're now just jumping into the game. So I'm going to move that away so you don't see my horrible desktop. I should find a way to hide that. Never mind. Just a, just a moment. I'm going to get a a blank notepad up to, to make it blank <laughs> so it doesn't look horrible. This is Exceed versus Full House Gaming, guys, coming up into this game. Just taking a breather. Listen up to this beautiful music as I uh, train myself up for being a an annoying radio DJ who interrupts the beginning of songs. Love it when I do that.
Okay, we are coming into the game now. I am doing uh, a little bit of moderation on the side, so just a moment. And that's first blood going down. Thirty seconds until minions spawn. Okay, back in the game. Sorry about that. We uh, we just had a little issue with one of the teams. If any of the teams are having issues, talk to CH Ghost in the LOL chat, and he will sort everything out. So uh, yeah, just a moment there. Minions have spawned. Just getting the ADCs and everything lined up as well for you, and the support's gonna love that Morgana support. Let's see if that Black Shield really pays off for them. There's no invades, but we did see that first kill of the game going to Draven, which can really kill a lane. He's gone back and he's picked up a longsword, so he's gonna be really aggressive this game. <laughs> Here we go, I have fixed everything up now, thank god. Yay, casting time! It's it's great to get back into this, I've been, I've been so out of it. But uh, hopefully my casting will pick up again, because it just hasn't been on par. Alright, so uh, just looking at the top lanes, it looks like Rengar's getting pretty damn aggressive. We've had a uh, defensive stance from Jax. Very good idea for that beginning of the game, because he does have that issue with Rengar spamming out abilities early. And once, hit, once Jax hits level 6 and he gets those perfect stuns off, he may just get way more effective. Not too sure how Rengar will handle that. He can definitely he can aggress um, Jax from the brush quite a lot with, uh, with his pounce ability. And in the mid lane, it's such a, it's such a back and forth between Katarina and, uh, and Kassadin. They do trade equally in the early game, but Kassadin is mana base, so you know he will have a little bit of difficulty in that mid. We do see a perfect dark binding going on as Snifties with a great trade from Draven, but a gank is coming in from Sejuani. This may be a little bit of a turnaround from Exceed. That stun does go on on Lustra Knight. That uh, Black Shield may just have a no. The, uh, the, I believe it was Permafrost going down. Frost of the North. Let me just confirm that because, um, yeah, all the other enemies with Frost take 60 magic damage. I believe it was that Permafrost going down there that managed to grab the kill and it is an aggression destructive going in the mid lane with uh, a double kill going out from I am a damned which was just devastating and there may just be another kill coming into this bot lane with no ward to protect Draven he's still up there trying to farm let's have a look but that was a double kill for I am a damned with a uh, gank coming in from Matt and, and a follow-up from Vontel and that's what I'm talking about oh they do manage to make the jump over the Zenith blade Ooh, Sejuani's, sorry, Sejuani's Arctic Assault into a Zenith Blade really caught out that Draven, so that first kill doesn't do as much for him as he may like. He's now taken out in the early game. There's going to be a bit more farm coming out on, uh, on Vayne. Both ADC scale so well, and that aggression is working out well for Werrell's Tibbers. But you know there's a bit more sustain on Harlow at the moment. He's burnt that, uh, he's burnt that health bot, but he's got the raw available to him as well. I mean, yeah, now he's level four. He's got that roar up and up and done. But that was an awesome kill on uh, awesome double kill on Cat. We do see the gank coming in from Matt Kame. He went in with the uh, sorry. He went in with uh, the ball kill. Sorry, power ball, and managed to get off a taunt on Ringa, who's jumping into the bushes. A good jump from Jax. Oh, that jump out from Harlow nearly saved him to get out to, to get him a kill. Oh, and he did get the he did get the ignite down on Werrells, but he didn't get that last auto attack out with his savagery. It was up. He just didn't spam it out quickly enough for Jax to get off his empowered. Very very close kill there. Some great jumps and great ganks already. So early in the game, I was just like, okay, well, slow down. I'm tired. Give me a rest. Give me a break. And the aggression continuing in the bot lane as uh, Snifties tries to continue on with the pressure. Ooh, one more hit, and that uh, that silver bolt would have been procked on Lustre. That may have been the end. Surprised 
Uh, Superior Name had just burnt a, uh, a tumble for that, so I don't think she could get close enough for that last hit. May have just been another kill for her in that situation, but the the sustain in the mid lane from I am Aiden working really well. She picked herself up a Negatron, so the trade coming out from Vontel is nowhere near as devastating as it could be. Whale Warrior just reminding us of the game that Exceed played last week, which was just so well executed. Just refreshing my my larynx. Oh. Sorry, just confirming some administrative stuff. I am a little bit back and forth. It will be uh, touch and go here, but look at that Lesnar I'm trying to trying to deny some damage with the black shield. Doesn't work on autos though. It's gonna be another kill for superior name. She's sitting up at one zero and two assists. So she's doing really well up at fifty farm as well from that first death on uh, on Draven. She was able to really catch up against him. And they're doing very, very well. It's hard to say which of them scale better. I do think Vayne scales a little bit better where Draven chunks harder and scales a little bit better with AD. Vayne scales far better with autos and attack speed. Give me, uh, give me your thoughts on that. I do, I do think Vayne is a little bit stronger in that regard. And stand aside, just, uh, you know, it can be strong because it is AoE, but, um, but it, there, there's a far longer stun sitting on uh, Condemned if you manage to get it off against the wall. Let me know what you think. There has been a vamp sifter picked up by uh, by Aerostyle now that he now that he went back from that kill before. He got that off from his longsword that he picked up from the first kill of the game. Snifty's playing really well with his aggression on Leona. Something you don't see as often. Ooh, double Dorans and a bilge water coming out from Vayne early in the game, and it looks like hey, hey, sorry, hey, Harlow found Matt Kim trying to steal off that blue buff in the mid, which will now be happily going, I believe, to uh, I am Adamed. But with that, with those cooldowns being based on cooldowns, it made it might actually go to wreck. It doesn't look like they're focusing on it. Missed another kill at the top lane. It looks like Rengar picked up a straggling Matt Kim. He managed to get him down so damn low in that last engage. Why am I missing kills? Gotta to, got to follow the directed camera. Just silly. All of the map, you know. That'd be a smart idea too. Just maybe. Ooh, those bot lane ward denies. There is a pink sitting on Morgana's one as well. She may be able to deny this pink. She's gonna go for it here. No, didn't quite. Would have been well worth it though, but we'll see if she picks up on that a bit later. Harlow stealing the red buff while Matt KM is down. Just getting back into his jungle now, and he's gonna he, he's just about to face the disappointment. Here's the aggression again from Snifties. There's no junglers coming in to uh, to really support superior name. It's just that one hit up on Era Style and the ult manages to miss, but that kill is gonna go to Morgana. Just barely. Those auto attacks are not going out quick enough from Vayne to get uh, to get Draven down before her death was imminent. And it may just be a double kill, but Snifties is in the middle of a minion line. No, it isn't. So it was a one for one. ADC is, of course, that kill did go to Morgana against Superior Name. So not as effective jumping on Era Style. That bot lane is suffering from the from the aggression being pulled out from Leona. It's been very effective. Black Shield may still save them a bit more yet. And there's the later game aggression coming out from uh, sorry from Reels Tubbers. They got that early gank off. On hey, Halo, and they've really built strong with that. They've gone, uh, sorry, um, where else Tibbers has gone from that that cloth armor onto a longsword and building into a phage, I believe. So he's tanking up decently, and he's pulling out the aggression as well. Love going phage in a top lane. It's just so useful. Gives you that health for sustain. Gives you that damage for continued pressure as well. And in the mid lane, the scales continue with I am 8 empty. He didn't pick up another kill, but look at that farm over Vontel. His pressure has been so intense that Vontel just hasn't got the lane coverage that he needed. He's been pushed out and controlled. 
And again, that Negatron will be doing so much for Iron Maidens right now. For Cat. Actually going with those Sorcerer Shoes as well. Oh! That pressure. Just intense. And it looks like there will be double, um... Double Blade of the Roaring Kings coming out from Exceed. So they'll be shredding through a lot of that armor on Matt KM. Ooh, very good jump from I Am Adem with that ward placement. Barely getting out of the taunt from Ramus. That was such a close call. You can see the taunt being casted. Just a barely close to nine. I Am Adem throwing out the ultimate. Catching Vontel. In his tracks. Oh, but Mad KM has got a slash down. He's not going to be able to follow up on that. Ramus was so close to it. And if he gets another power pull off, I Am Adent will have to jump to that uh, to that ward there. But that opportunity still stands for him if he needs to. Another game coming out from Rick going in as uh, as the lane master. They may just pick up a double with Eric under the turret. He throws out the ultimate. It's not going to be enough. He manages to get Sejuani under the turret. She stayed a bit too close in and didn't back out in time. She wanted to CC him to keep him there. But he had great control. Knowing he was going to get Sejuani already throw out a bit more damage onto Vayne and Snefties. But that's going to be one dead turret for, uh, for Exceed there. Who are plowing through full house at the moment. They just had some great gangs. And they've got a they've got a team comp that really supplements uh, denying a lot of gangs from, from players like Ramus. That black shield can still help them from Organa a bit later in the game to deny a lot of those team fights. They've got a good amount of damage on their team as well. They've got a good amount of gang potential to jump from Jax, the uh, the rift walk from Vontel. Speed from Ramus, always so good. Plus that ultimate on, on Morgana. Let's see if she focuses out getting an hourglass at any point in the game. Superior name using that condemn to get Matt Cam away. It looks like it's not going to work though. She manages, he manages, sorry, to get off that taunt. And that's one dead superior name with Aerostyle picking up that kill. He's sitting 3-3. Three, three. He's really needing that. But he's only 30 CS away. So he's actually, he's picking up really, really well when that turret went down throughout the landing phase. And he's going to pick up even more now that um, now that, that death on Superior Name went down. Another gank up the top lane. Rick is really destroying lanes. Really, really fitting to his name. Ooh, Jax having the damage focus on Harlow. Didn't quite make it. Terror of the Goddess is being focused out from, um, sorry, from Cassidy, and there it is. Very effective on his champion, but it's, it's pretty slow stacking if he doesn't get enough Qs out. A little bit of Wood Denying coming in on Dragon there. They do have the control letters exceed gaming at least. It looks like a Zeal coming out from Jax up at the top lane as well. Getting a bit more speed out, making use of his ultimate to really pick up the damage on Harlow. Ten six into the game, there's only a 4k gold lead up on Exceed. It's not that significant. And again, there are a lot of tools on Full House to get into team fights. There's great targeting available on Exceed as well, though. So if Harlow jumps in there with his ultimate right on top of Aerostyle. There's not as much as there is for Superior Name for getting out of fights. He does have uh, he does have the stand aside. And he does have his speed available to him. Oh, there's the Morgana ultimate doing its work. Going to be picking up a kill on Superior Name early and the uh, the Bloodthirster is already available on Draven. He may just be able to follow up with his life kill. Just not enough and Jax Again, that attack speed working for him so well in the mid lane. I am Adam getting taken down just barely from the ignite from Vontel. Rick followed up with a very good gank in the mid lane, but wasn't able to sustain I am Adam for long enough. But yeah, in the top lane with Tibbers, with where, is, where else Tibbers? With Jax, I should say. It's a little bit easier with them champion summoner names. Herder. Um. He's able to make use of, uh, of getting that zeal, of getting that early attack speed, building up to the zeal rather, using that uh, ultimate of his. 
taken down Harlow very effectively. But Harlow is still great targeting potential. I think that's gonna that could really save them in the late game if they were able to if they're going to team up very effectively. And if you'll notice, a lot of those kills have gone to Snifties. A lot of those kills from Exceed has gone to Snifties. He's not a gold sink per se. There's still a lot of assists on Vayne. Just checking out the differences. 5k to 5.6k. 5.1k to 5.6k. So it's only a 500 gold difference between the ADCs. So they're still doing fine. And that gives the support the opportunity. Yeah, he's gone straight for the ages there. He got a very early uh, side stone. Ruby side stone. Rather. And he's able to get out that early ages as well. Which can do wonders for his team. They can roam a lot harder now. There's some decent amount of warding coming in on the map. A lot of it's going to exceed at the moment as they got that early pushing potential, getting that bot turret down. Again, the bot from if he, if he, HG is really picking up, especially with the ultimate available on Lustrin. Sorry, on Lustinite. Let's see if it's going to be enough to have them maintain this position. They have warded up that try, I believe. Yep, they'll be able to spot out Rick if he jumps in. Of course, it's not always warding. You definitely have to keep an eye on the map. And Rick is opting for a lane gank instead so they might not pick this up actually the one place they have not wooded in comes rick he's gonna walk to assault right in there is his ultimate going out just yet may just wait for lust tonight to finish his off and superior name no he does manage to get the ultimate out but superior name's already going down and they're able to follow up with another kill onto rick as well with a great dark binding from lust tonight and a gang coming in from vontel as well his Q just devastating at the moment let's see if i am aiden is going to pick himself up a quadra now he's not going to go for that opportunity he hasn't got him, he's actually picked himself up a side stone to maintain the vision for his team rather than going straight for a needless loop. And Dragon going down there, just barely getting taken out by, uh, by Full House. You really thought the, the opportunity was there for Exceed, but they didn't take it when they had the map control. They tried, to, they tried to push those turrets and gain map control that way. To maintain map control, rather. But now as that massive push went out from full house, they're up on kills, and the gold is now completely even. With Tibbers scaling so well in that top lane, the burst is there for Harlow, but the maintain damage is there for Tibbers. Oh, oh, just barely getting him. Harlow just barely getting uh, Jax there with his, with his ignite. And that was close. So it looks like they're starting to stand even. The burst from Rengar is still doing very well. He's got great shred, shred with um, with the uh, Blade of the Room King. But Jax's ultimate just does so much more for him. And he scales so much better with it in the late game. It does depend on how Rengar builds and if he's able to, uh, to build up a lot better. He has been having a bit of a rough time. Just checking out the gold advantage though. It's, it's actually a little bit in favor to Rengar from the CS that he's able to maintain. Because he was able to burst out Jax earlier in the game that pushed his lane a bit more. Which gave them the opportunity to gank, really. Haunting guy's finished on cat, she's able to push in a little bit further. And look at that, she's maintaining that turret vision. Sorry, that turret presence as her team came and backed her up. In comes Matt Kimmy, just manages to get the uh, the taunt on Iron Aiden, but he's not got turret down. In comes the follow-up from Exceed, and they're going to be moving on for a kill fest. The flash went out from Snifties to try and save them, but I'm sorry. Where else Tib is coming in with his leap strike into him in power. Going to pick up the kill for him as well. He's sitting on 4-2 now, equaling the gold nearly from the top laners. Great Contempt coming out from Vayne is going to put Aerostyle in a tough position. His ADC follow-up was not as good as Vayne's just then. 
He's sitting way far off on gold, but that's the difference from getting a, a condemned off really well. It gives Vayne the opportunity to stack up as many silver bolts as she wants to, or as she can. With 1316, the balance has swayed to FHG, and of course they do have that ultimate from Morgana. They've got the lockdown from, uh, from Mad Kim. An AoE stun potential on Jax as well. But Snifties could easily save the day if he gets off a very, very good ultimate. Then Arctic Assault can follow off on Wreck as well as Glacial Prison. And Superior Name can stay safe farming at the back lane with Iron Ademed picking up a massive ultimate right in the middle of it all. If they do focus too much on, on Snifties, and of course Snifties has scaled so well with health because he got those early kills. So in terms of map presence, definitely still an advantage to uh, to exceed. They do have quite, uh, they've, they've got one turret over and they've got a lot of jumpy champions, a little bit less than full house. But their warding's starting to get a bit minimalistic because of the pushing that full house has been doing. They've just been teaming up a bit more effectively. Aerostyle was down the bot lane without any support, but now he's sitting there with Morgana at this point. It's very hard to say if uh, if Morgana will really will really beat out Eleona. It depends if that Black Shield does enough to to take down the Zenith and the Shield of Daybreak, which it can do, and if the ultimate does go off on both the ADC and the support, but it always could go either way with that. There's the Arctic Assault into a Glacial Prison up at the top lane, but Tibbers is falling pretty damn low. Hollow throwing out his ultimate to try and go for the jump. He may just put it down on Matt Kim. Just to finish off the kill, he certainly will, and Matt Kim, I don't think, realized there was a very invisible ring guard playing around with him, but it may be a double kill coming up from Vontel, he followed up on that very quickly. No, he's just going to pick up one, making it a one-for-one -one trade. It's still good, it's still good, and it actually ends up being the edges coming out first for Full House Gaming, doing so well for them. Condemned, not going to be able to save the vein now as he's waiting for an opportunity to get the flash off. He may just get a kill. He throws out the, uh, wow, he managed to throw out that barrier just in time. Picking up a kill on the support. Very well played. Condemning, uh, condemning the ADC on full house back into the wall. Very good play indeed. And then focusing those autos continuously on Morgana. The only thing he could do once that flash was down. He made the best of that situation. The best was definitely good enough. So it's 15 18 now. The gold advantage is only 1k difference. And both of these teams have great map presence. Both of them have followed up on team fights pretty well. It does look like Full House has scaled a little bit better into the late. I'm um, sorry, Exceed have started to scale a bit, a bit better into the late game. Just with, uh, just with that vein and the decisions that they are making. But Full House have definitely thrown out quite a few tricks. Tibbers may be making the jump on. He certainly does with the Empowered. It's enough to take down Ringar again. There are so many bursts in this game. It's insane. So many high damage, high profile champions. So many people getting caught out. There's a lot of anti warding You can see the ward is actually, the warding is actually switched out to exceeds advantage. And the map control as Full Houses went down a bit earlier.
and then go full house, continuing focusing down the turrets. It's now turned into uh, a game that's just objective after objective for full house. Full house have just come out of nowhere this year and started dominating in the scene. You can see how they follow up really well when they come together as a team. Their laning was a lot of uh, a lot of champ select differences. Exceed, exceed really matched them lane for lane there. But coming into the late game, the jumping potential from Full House, the uh, the map control they've got with that, has really helped out as well as that Morgana all down in the bot lane. Just a bit of trouble with that condemned on Vayne, which is so useful. And they do pick up the second dragon of the game, giving them that five, nearly 5k gold lead from the kills that they got on that turret back there. On the top turret that they just managed to take out. Let's see how Snifty's responds with this ultimate going in with uh, with Wreck on an Arctic Assault and a Glacial Prism. Draven's starting out on his on his IE now. Vane looks like she's picked up a Mercurial Scimitar, so noting all of that CC coming from Full House. Very good follow-up from him indeed. That'll give uh, Vayne just that little bit more control in teamfights since she's got the Condemned to save her as well. I think Vontal has a big opportunity to take her out after her ult has been burnt out though. Trinity already coming out for Tibbers. 27 minute 20, oh, Trinity, I think it was a bit earlier though. But he's doing so well. Like, I think if they, if they want to, uh, Full House Gaming can target, um, can target ADMs and superior name very quickly and I think it's gonna be hard for Snifties. It's, it's sort of all up to Snifties and Rick to, to build that wall to stop any of the jumping from uh, from FH coming on. I mean having having Von Tal and Jax. Oh Mechan might just be going down here. He did throw out the flash. He's trying to get away but he's already slowed is the silver bolts from Vayne picking up the kill and now the focus is on Aerostyle. It's a very squishy ADC you've found there. The ultimate might go out just barely from the last but it's not going to come out in time. It's not going to finish off and Vontel bursting out just in time with his rift walk. Very close there. A great follow-up from Exceed. But it was, uh, it was Exceed sort of catching everyone from Full House out. Full House was trying to get this around, but Exceed responded to that perfectly. That's all it takes to take out a surround, just focusing down key targets. Once Aerostyle started auto-attacking them, he was bug bait. For all the, uh, the Half-Life 2 fans out there. Oh, just freshing up on my caffeine. That's just how I roll. We've got a Hydra coming out on Harlow as well. That'll work interestingly for teamfights as he's got the shred on Blade of the Ruined King. Do, uh, do correct me if I'm wrong. Blade of the Ruined King does work on the AoE. No, 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 no sorry. Uh, Blade of the Ruined King does not work on the AoE for Ravenous Hydra. Ravenous Hydra just AoEs from autos. Sorry, from flat attack damage. If I'm mistaken. If I am mistaken, let me know. See what you think. Because these kind of things I, I've never actually seen before. A, uh, a Hydra and a Blade of the Ruined King together. And I don't know if they, I don't know if they mesh. If they do, that would be just so devastating. Come on, where are the Fiora players pulling this up? Looks like a Sunfire is going to be started out from uh, from Mad Kim, but will that do much against Superior Name? Probably not. Not with all the true damage coming out. The next real objective standing up on the map is that Baron, unless somebody can move in. I mean, that top lane turret from Full House is looking very tasty at the moment. Oh, Vayne just barely tumbling out of that. Um, I was going to say Dark Passage. No, Dark Binding. Dark something. Just tumbling out of that dark binding would have been the end of him if, if Mad Kim had been able to get that taunt off. Very close call. I'm sorry that we don't have a duo caster, but we have been recently having issues with the technology that we've used to cast for, for Company of Gamers. 
It's been screwing around a lot with the sound. Vane coming out now with a laugh whisper. So that's going to be putting a lot more shred in those team fights and that Mercurial Scimitar. No, I haven't seen him pop that much as of yet. But coming in with that group up, that can easily make the difference to a team fight from Exceed. A little bit of anti-warding coming out from Matt Kim there. He's grabbed himself an elixir. Which you can use to such great advantage as the... Uh, actually, the double sight stone... Yeah, it's still in effect. The double sight stone is still in effect for Exceed Gaming. So Matt Kim may just get so much gold out of, uh, out of using that elixir. Already starting to deny those wards. Two teams beginning to converge. We don't see the Runic Bulwark finish just yet on Matt Kim, though. Ultimate put down from Harlow, and does he? I think he propped it a second time, so we can make the jump on the Aerostyle. The burst goes down. Ooh, just, uh, sorry, last night thinking that uh, Dark Binding going out just a bit early, thinking Harlow would have to chase after Aerostyle, I believe, who turned around at the last second. Definitely a good attempt, pushing the ADC down and giving them a chance to pick up the dragon. Very well played. So third dragon in the game, jumping up for exceed. That is how you, uh, that's how you make opportunities. You run blindly into the enemy team, destroy their ADC, force them to back. And then run to dragon. If there is anything in this uh, in this stream that you spot out that uh, that's a really good play that you think teams can really use the information for, let me know. A lot of what we do here for Cog and uh, and for my casting anyway is trying to trying to give teams the opportunity to improve, to see opportunities that they could uh, that they could take as a team. The Ringar and a Kazix can really do for your team. Stealth in, jump out, get the damage, and then go take an objective. Because League of Legends is very much an objective-based game. Not all, uh, not all real time. Team tip number forty-two. Make sure you make an objective plan and take them as a team. By the way. <laughs> Don't, uh, don't have, um, Draven Solo Baron. Not always a good idea. Sunfire finished up first on, on Jax there, which is surprising. Oh, the ultimate is burned out from Snifty. So there's going to be no team fight coming out from Exceed. We may see the Arctic Assault in, into a Glacial Prison now that, uh, with, with Rick, but, and a little bit of targeting with Ringa on, to, on Aerostyle, but will that really go their way? That I believe they really need that CC from Snifties on the ultimate. Because all of the jumping available on full house is so dangerous, and the ultimate from Lust and I, and I can just devastate them, especially devastating INA Dempt. If the soul shackles hit iron ADMs from uh, from last night, that is that is not a fun story for a Katarina. An ultimate will be stopped if you if you time it wrong and if you get stunned out, you may just die. Starting to get way into the late game. Still interested that the bulwark isn't finished on, uh, on Ramus. He must be floating quite a lot of gold, sitting at 800. I think he's been warding up quite a lot for his team. 
That double sidestone is just doing so well for Exceed. They've constantly got wards on the map, despite the fact that there's been a lot of uh, anti-warding from Mac AM. And then Snifty's jumping in doing the exact same thing. If you don't see an oracles in a game, there's something wrong. By the way, I believe, um, I'll just check this with, uh, with Ghost here. I believe the patch has gone out with, uh, with oracles, Kia. Hey? Yeah, the on death change. Has it come out just yet? It had come out on the Chinese client that I was playing on yesterday, but uh, Oracles has been changed so that when you do die with it, because it's on a timer, it stays on the timer and it stays on your champion, but will run out uh, when you... We're just on that timer, but not when you die. Which is how they're sort of balancing it from before when you lost it, only when you died. Making those Oracles targets very, very key. Ooh, that was a perfect little dodge there by Superior Name on uh, on the Dark Binding. That was close. Ie now finished out for Draven. He started for a little bit more shred with his um, sorry, with his brutalizer. And the Bulwark now finished out for Snifty. He's picked up one more kill after after getting all of those kills in the in the beginning of the game. Of course, you don't get those kill streak kills from the beginning of the game. That's why uh, that's why grabbing kills in the early is quite a lot weaker. Double Oracles on XC. They really don't want any side on full house. Look at that ward coverage in comparison. That is so silly. It's completely shifted once again. Oh, getting a, getting a word in a little bit from Noel Easy. The time on Oracles gets reduced if the holders die as well. Um, so it does stay on, but the time is reduced. And tell me, Noel Easy, does it, uh, does it tick down while you're dead as well as reducing the time? Killing Oracles people is always important, no matter what. Definitely, Noel Easy. Definitely. It's not like it's useless because of this change. So yeah, it still ticks down when you die, and the time it gets reduced when you die as well. So it's it's a big hit to those oracles. But always good to take down oracles targets. Powerball coming out on Ramus. Sorry, just confirming something with Kia there. There was that Powerball on Ramus going out. I think it was I think it was just trying to set up that kill. We do see uh, the Suga's arm guard coming out from Von Tell, so we may be moving into an hourglass. Thanks so much by the way for uh, for that information, Noel. Here we go. It looks like a bit of staging coming out from Full House, sitting 18-20. It's very equal for both of the teams. There's a lot going for both of these teams as well. Their targeting has to be very precise. There's a bit more targeting opportunity on Full House. The ultimate on uh, on last night is great, but he hasn't got himself a... Um, or he hasn't even been starting out for himself a... Uh, the name of the item that is awesome. Hourglass. Yeah. Um, but he hasn't quite started out the hourglass yet. He might not be focusing on that for a very long time, if at all. The warding is down here, actually, for Full House. So they note that Exceed is taking down the Baron, but they took it down so damn quickly that it was worth it. That uh, taunt went out from Mad KM on a superior name, who's now focusing down Vontel, who did dive onto him. Everyone's trying to dive this ADC, but superior name is keeping them out of range and destroying them while the rest of the team mop everyone up. That was so devastating. The CC available on Snifty, oh ah, my voice is going crazy, on Snifty's and Rick was enough to keep the rest of Full House Gaming at bay. Sorry, the um, the Solar Flare and the Glacial Prison keeping everyone from Full House Gaming at bay while uh, Superior Name did a bit of the mop up and then just led everyone on a wild goose chase. That was incredible! Incredible follow up from XC. That Baron definitely helped out there, no, no doubt at all. 
Oh, and ADM's getting a great uh, ultimate off as well. Not getting stunned out of it, I believe. They can move in and mob at this turret, but the time is it's, it's not that late in the game. I mean, it's still late game. It's not late enough for those timers to matter as much, so it's only going to be an inhibitor going down for Exceed here. It's not the end of the game. Red team's inhibitor has been destroyed. That was just a fantastic little push from uh, from Exceed. Exactly what they needed. They that Baron down so damn quickly. A lot of that burst damage going uh, going from Hollow and Superior Name. And I am Aiden coming in from the follow up on on team damage. Now Era Style has picked himself up a Guardian Angel, and I think at this point that uh, that Baron buff is going halfway through. Yeah, it is just halfway done. So it may just run out before they take the next objective. But that was definitely worth it. Now those super minions going down the mid lane. There can be a lot more pushing potential from Exceed. And they picked up those kills. So it's a 2k gold lead. These teams have stayed so, so neck and neck throughout the entire game. It's incredible. Oh, and it's not a needless lead coming out from Von Tell just yet. So he's focusing on something else before he gets out that uh, that Zonia's hourglass. Quite a lot of tanking up. We actually see a Locket of the Iron Solari coming out on Sichuani as well. So that's another thing going for their team, just giving them the protection. And they finished off the Rook Bulwark quite a lot quicker, with Full House still sitting on their Aegis. Superior Name is going to be that one thing that's shredding so much of the turrets for them. They can just keep on in. Oh, they've managed to catch one of Full House off guard. The ultimate did go down from, uh, from Jax, but it's not going to be enough to sustain all of the damage getting pulled out. And Lusten and I forced to flash out, not even ulting for the team. Wouldn't have been able to sustain it. That's where you need that hourglass and where on a support Morgana it's just so hard to get. They did pick up the kill on Matt Kim and on Jax when they made the jump. It looks like they could be moving in for the finish. Using this Baron buff still on Reg, Harlow and I am Adempt. It may just be a second inhibitor, but it's a long time before Kim and, and Jax get back up. Before Ramus and Jax return. Lust the Night still is the ultimate though. If uh, if they make the dive, Exceed could regret it. Are they going to continue? Yep, they've got a minion line coming in from the bot line. They're going to try and focus down that that um, that turret. But hey, I am I am ADM straying a bit too close to that turret. It's going to get taken away from the uh, from the shred coming out from Air Style. Yep, they'll be able to focus down this turret. We made an ultimate from Lust the Night trying to continue on the game. As Vontel gets jumped on with a very nice, uh, a very nice Zenith coming out from Leona there. Rick does get Dark Bound, but no, it's not going to be enough for them to follow up. They don't have their ADC. All they do is their ADC up and trying to grab that. Wasn't enough damage getting pushed out, but they grabbed that, that third inhibitor turret. So they're going to have double super minions spawning up now. And they've got so much gold in the bank to spend. Now sitting at 3k gold advantage. They can push in and really finish it, finish this off. Once the ultimate's gone down from Katarina, she can just Zonia's, even if she gets stunned out of it, as long as she doesn't die, and wait for her team to do the damage so she can get the refresh based on the assists. Very good call. We'll see if it comes into play at the right time. Those stuns can easily take that away. Of course, we may see the jump into a Zonia's, then into an ultimate. Which is... It can be a little bit riskier. May not be, considering if you go and jump straight up with that ultimate and the stuns go down. You want those stuns to focus everyone else. It depends how full house coordinate their stuns. Which can be can, can be very hard as a team. Great wave clearing on Jax, especially. So it looks like they're not too phased by these double super minions just yet. It may be another Baron yet before the game is finished push the lanes enough to keep that inhibitor safe. Sorry, that uh, that Nexus safe. 
Dan Straight Rookery in the chat. This could go either way still. It's 25 23. They've stayed neck and neck for kills. Their team fights are still pretty close. The gold gap is still being reduced. It's just a lot of that team fight potential is, is on the barrier that Snifties and Rick create and that superior name can follow up on. But there's a lot of opportunity in Lust tonight. Just no way to keep her alive. She's been a prime target the entire time for Exceed. Ooh, the Zenith initiate just barely missing. And we're now going on this. They're very happy to play a turret space. And it looks like they're jumping inside. The Sunflare goes down. And that game is knocked against the turret. He's going to be the focus of attention. There goes out the ultimate from, uh, sorry, from Rick there as well. As the ADC era styles Guardian Angel is popped. Down he goes for that second time. Control has been swapped to Lust tonight, whose ult has gone out. It didn't do as much, though. And a perfectly timed Dark uh, Binding right onto that category. It's not going to be enough as Superior Name focuses down the, uh, the Nexus there. And that's going to be the end of the game with Exceed Gaming picking up the win against Full House. Full House did so damn well to follow up, staying neck and neck against Exceed. That was incredible. I've, I've, I don't think I've had this much fun casting a New Zealand match in a long, long, long time. So neck and neck, so precise, so great in the way that they uh, they chose their objectives and got the warding down. But exceed, they got those double, um, they got those double, ah, double ruby side stones out, and they followed up on it so damn well. They had a great combo with Leona and Sejuani. There were a lot of opportunities for for Full House, but I feel like the opportunities were just laning in the wrong lanes and weren't able to follow up. Like Lust tonight was able to get her ult off every now and then, but it was so evil. Uh, sorry, so evil. <laughs> so easy to run away from because she had uh, she had that CC potential that was just not catching up. Um, sorry, she she didn't have the uh, the zonias to follow up on it. But we will be moving on to game two in just a sec. I'll find out what that is for you and link the brackets in just a minute. Congratulations, succeed still in the winners bracket. Full house knocked down to the uh, to the lower bracket, and we'll see who comes out of the lower bracket at the end of the day. We're going to be staying staying in the upper bracket to see how it goes. We'll be right back with game number two, guys.